Okay. Hmm. You know, it's always nice doing 7548. Okay, you found this at a thrift store. Which is pretty awesome, because that's a nice watch. It's got a few hits on it, but nice clean insert. It's got some water damage, I see that. 5-3. Huh. Let's get the back off this. Hang on just a sec. Okay. Hang on a second. That goes in there. Good. 5-3. May 1985. Well, you see a few things. Well, it's got... This screw's been replaced. That's incorrect. Needs to be a step screw. Back is hazy, but... Clean enough. I don't see any marks in it. It's definitely a runner. Well, let's see what the notation on this battery is. Oh, and let's see if you've got a rest washer for this side of the strap. Yes, you do. Excellent. That's always nice to see. Those get lost so often. Okay. We can just drop this into the thingy right away. Ditto for this. So somebody put a new battery in this in February of this year, and then the watch ended up at a thrift store for some reason. That's real interesting. I don't know why that would have happened, but... Original case back seal is just flat as board. So we will return this to you, and you can look at it, figure out what's going on. All right, so I want to look at that hand stack right quick. Let's just, I just want to look at it. Make sure that I'm... It's moving a little. You can mostly see it on the, hang on a second. Let me get this screwed back down. So the movement isn't moving. Hang on. Mostly you can see it. If you look at the gap here between the day and the date. And you can actually see the 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 day wheel going like this. Yeah. Yep, yepers. Okay. Well, that's not a surprise. We have some hazing on the hands, a little bit of patina in there, but I bet we can clean that up. Same with these spots. Revitalum ought to be able to do a job with that. Sorry, people, there's no... Revitalum is a product that I made that is only here, so I'm very sorry. Don't go rushing off to Amazon or whatever trying to look for this stuff to buy it because it doesn't exist. Boy, you know, though, imagine if I produced it in a big batch and actually sold this stuff. My concern is the inconsistency. Sometimes it worked great, other times it doesn't. But isn't that true of every product? Am I holding myself to too high a standard? That if I don't have a product that works miraculously every single time, I'm not going to do it at all? I, I can't think of a single product that works perfectly every single time. Okay. Get this circuit off of here. Get the circuit and the coil out so we can put those where they're safe.
yeah, looks clean. Little CD battery acid in there. Okay, that's good. That is good. Let's get this coil out of here. Come on. Uh -huh. Cool. Okay. So there that is. There's a particular order I like to do this in, but it's not necessarily the right order. It's just an order. It's my order. Yeah, it's had, um, it's still got its stem rest washer, which is great. Crown is nice and dirty. I love, look at that. Yeep. I'll have to hand clean that. These don't, these and the knurling, it always holds the, the grot, and I always have to end up hand cleaning it. Looks like Sebastian stole my Bergeon dial protector again. Okay, so hang on a second. I have to go find Okay, it. got the hands off. Working on it, working on the dial. And now, therefore, it's time to disassemble the train. With its teeny tiny itty bitty super cute train bridge come on come on it's one of these things where it's going to go kapoink it's going to fight me and fight me and fight me and then it's just going to end up in the tree out back of the house okay I guess I was wrong a little bit of moisture in there. Isn't that interesting? Somebody lubricated this. Huh. It's There's lubricant on all the things. They must have just lubricated the back. I mean, I'll look and see if they lubricated the front, but I'd be shocked if they did. Okay. Right, so we gotta get this out of there. That is our hacking lever. And then we have this. This is the this is the basically it's the disconnect for the circuit. That when you pull the crown and to hack this, this little thing, there's a post that sticks through this in the circuit, and it takes out the power. Come on. It's a real interesting diddly. There's got to be reasons for all the things, what, what they did, but it is an interesting diddly. Alrighty. <clears throat> Fourth wheel and pinion. This, boop. Get down there. stepper motor. Let me put that over there because I want to, you have to clean that with Rotoco in order to get any chunks off of it. Okay, so what I'm looking for is <clears throat> is it ever why would somebody pay to have a new battery put in a watch and then donate it to a thrift store? 
Seems kind of funky to me. Okay, let's. I'm gonna flip this and let's get that front taken apart. Look at the wiggle. Well, of course, I'm, the, the center wheel cock is not present, so of course it's going to be a little more wiggly than normal. Boop. Hmm. It looks clean. I mean, in the sense that it looks original. Doesn't look like anybody's ever messed with it. I'm here. God. Mm, nice and clean. Always good. Yeah, it looks pretty sharp in here. It looks pretty sharp. Come on. Yep. Here's the one of the weak links. Wait, where did it go? Did I drop it? Aha. Uh -huh. This is the intermediary date driving wheel, and if there's damage inside the train, this is the part that tends to take the hit. Well, that looks okay. And that rotates nicely. Good. That's not worn. Let's get this out of here. Boop. There's your can of pinion. And then there it is. There's the center wheel hole Yeah, you can see it's ovaled out this way. I don't know what Sika was thinking. I never do. Yeah, you can see that it's blurred out on one side. Yeah, okay. So let me get this stuff off of here and let's do that jewel. Sitting here. Life got away from me. I realized I wasn't filming a video. Anyway, back together. It's running. And I have one of my super special secret parts. There's your brand new step screw. Thankfully, thankfully these aren't too hard to find. But still, they're harder than they should be. I should be able to get under the hardware store and buy any Seiko part I want. Always got to be careful with these screws because they have a tendency to launch themselves into space. So there's a method that I use. You hold it down with your finger. You don't use the screwdriver to hold the thing down because your screwdriver will slip. And the next thing you know, you need to be digging out another screw. Very exciting stuff. Okay, let's firm this one down. Okay. So this old screw you no longer need to worry about. Oh, 
I always like this because if you get these energizers, one of the things that get out of there. One of the things I like about Energizer, and it's just purely aesthetic, is that when you put in uh, an Energizer, you can see the the battery number and made in Japan. I just I just think it's that's neat. Okay, so now let's go look at the let's go ooh, let's turn on the QT99. Okay, fabulous QT99 time. Let's see where we're at. Ooh. So what we were waiting for is gate 10, so it's 10 counts, and then it averages that for 10, as long as it can hear clearly. <laughs> wow. Oh dear, wow. Oh, I'm not saying oh dear in a bad way. The way this works, this scale, this number here, this, that's a second. This is tenths of a second. This is hundredths of a second. So what we want to see basically is close to zero, zero, zero as possible. But this is two one hundredths of a second per day. That's really, really, really accurate. It's still running in, so it's got to settle. But I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm not going to touch this right now. I can, I can dial this into pretty tight. But these numbers are going to change a little bit overnight because it's now it's the end of the day, beyond the end of the day, and I want to, I want to let this thing run in overnight because otherwise, if I adjust it to perfect now and let it be, the numbers could change by tomorrow morning. So I'm just going to leave it like this, and then we will. We will revisit tomorrow morning, but that's that's really, 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 really good first place to sit. Yeah, and as these run in, they tend to this number tends to drop. The accuracy tends to go a little negative. I don't know why. It's not a bad thing. It's just it's kind of what they do. So once this is all settled in, I want to get it readjusted to the point that it's ever so slightly positive. So you're gaining a little bit of time, not losing it. Um, and then, but I want to wait until it runs in. But this is a great first place to, whoops, this is a great first place to start. I don't, yeah, I don't think I really want to fiddle with it right now. Okay, so that's good. Let me, let me move on. And that means that I'm, I'm done for the day. I'm going to let this run in overnight and we'll deal with it tomorrow. Cool. And so here we are. Look at that. This is what we want in terms of its running in and where it is. So I've adjusted it and this is looking real consistent. It seems to be flipping back and forth between six one hundredths and four one hundredths and in that area. And that's what we want. And there we go. So my Vintelum did a pretty decent job on your dial. Uh, there were spots here and here and here. Um, and I think a couple right here. And we cleared that up. You can still see them if you look real close, but it's definitely better than it was. Gosh, I'm trying to get some decent light in here. I'm overcast today. Okay, in any case, so uh, you can still see there's a teeny mark right here, right there. I, I could have really, really, really gone nuclear, but in the past when I've really worked with the Vintelum to try to get something like this to go away, it ends up damaging the loom. That black spot goes all the way through, so all the loom has that pip mark. Uh, the hazing on the hands, uh, I was able to remove. Still a little bit left. There's a tiny bit here and some right here in the base. But generally, I think it's fine. That insert cleaned up beautifully. Nice and smooth and clicky. Accuracy is holding right about at that three to five to seven one hundredths of a second range. Okay, but here's the one thing to think about. The one thing that's important. Whoever the original owner was with this, they weren't 100% careful with this crown. So, 
if you need to go, you open, you unscrew the crown, and you're going to do whatever the heck it is you want to do with the crown. It's super duper important. When you push, when you want to set the crown in, don't just twist it down. Push it in, turn it backwards until you feel the click. Oh, come on. There was the click. I heard it and felt it. Now, it's going to, it's going to, the reason you do that is you want to make sure that it, hang on a second. You want to make sure that those threads mesh, they interlock. And then you can seat it down firmly the way that it should be. You don't want to just honk it down because the threads, the threads are fine. That just somebody wasn't 100% careful. And you just want to make sure that it's right. So again, you unscrew, and then you can see that drop in just like that. And it screws down just like that. It'll feel like it's binding up a little bit on you. There's that drop. It'll feel like it stops. It's a little rough, but just there you go. And it screws all the way down. Now, you really shouldn't have to fiddle with this, but once, you know, once every, you know, twice a year during daylight savings coming and going. That's a really nice watch. These are so, these are so cool. Okay. Thank you so much.